everyone. Welcome to another episode of Add a Spec Guide. Happy Friday. I am Max. Today you join me to discuss electric pickup trucks. Why am I talking about this? Mostly we talk about cars and SUVs in this channel, but I wanted to give a basically quick PSA on why the electric pickup market is so important. For some of you, this might already be obvious, but I want to give a quick summary of the situation as it is for a lot of the country, but specifically where I live in Colorado, especially. So Let's just give an example right here, right? We've got the Ram 2500, heavy duty truck. I see these in I-70 all the time. They're very popular. Sometimes the bed is empty, most of the time actually, but sometimes people actually use these to tow and do cool things with. You know, they're big, powerful diesel trucks, very manly, very American. Uh, you can get your power wagon, etc. That's all well and fine. But uh, these kinds of vehicles, you might suspect, get low MPG really bad. Uh, even the diesel ones, which are granted more efficient than the normal gasoline ones. So there's this basically thing called the clean truck strategy that Colorado started pursuing about a year ago. And I think a lot of other states are looking into this too. It's a big deal though in Colorado for us because to be honest, our air quality is actually uniquely pretty bad, uh, which is weird. You think Colorado, right? This beautiful outdoorsy state, but our air quality has a lot of issues and not all of it's vehicle based. And I don't want to get political or anything in this video, but I'll just say that um, a big contributor of vehicle emissions are the largest, heaviest vehicles on the road, these pickup trucks. In fact, this basically Colorado DOT study, right? The Department of Transportation found that Despite being less than 10% of registered vehicles in Colorado, these pickup trucks contribute 22% of the on-road greenhouse gas emissions. So um, pretty disproportionate. And, you know, I can make behavior judgments and say, you shouldn't drive a pickup truck if you're not using it. But we have a spec believe in the free market, drive what you want, buy what you want. I'm not making this video to get on a platform. What I want to iterate though, is the importance of trucks to greenhouse gas emissions and the general impact of the environment, because they're just, let's face it, bigger, less efficient vehicles. Uh, not only are they bigger and heavier, but the bed they have does actually make them uh, less efficient from an MPG perspective. So uh, already you can get zero emission tax credits in states like Colorado and federally, of course, is the federal tax credit. Uh, and these are, you know, a nice deal. In Colorado, we get an extra $2,000 off the purchase price of a vehicle. Um, in addition to being able to stack that with a federal incentive. Well, there's some talk now in Colorado about even further incentives where there's gonna be for medium and heavy duty electric vehicles, that's pickup trucks if you're paying attention, uh, a $4,000 um, tax credit for the medium ones, and then $8,000 for the heavier duty ones. I think this is really cool. Uh, and it's something that I kind of, I don't know, in, in support. Maybe you don't want to, it might drive taxes up. Obviously these incentives are a temporary measure, but it's very interesting. And if you're in the market for a pickup truck, then this is why I think you should increasingly consider electric options. Now I have to be real, you know, there's a lot of great things about electric pickup trucks, but uh, they are not perfect. You know, a lot of people will tell you that we need them right now. And sure, they're lower emissions, uh, lower lifetime emissions because they're more efficient. However, Let's be real, making batteries is not a perfectly clean process. It does contribute a big front end impact to production. Uh, and then of course, there's the matter of how the electricity is generated. But I will say, um, if you look at you know studies like NRDC uh, and others have done, uh, electric vehicles actually are cleaner than you think, even when they're running on coal, which so many states in the United States do. Uh, and that's because electric motors by design are more efficient than a gasoline engine any gasoline engine. Gasoline engines have gotten remarkably efficient in the last like several decades. And it's kind of amazing how far they've gone. But uh, when it comes to general overall system efficiency, an electric motor is just much better. So regardless of how you're generating the power to charge an EV, even when you consider transmission losses from you know the grid to your home to the vehicle, um, they're still honestly pretty efficient compared to basically just about any gas car. Uh, and now there are, I will say, some interesting, uh, really good gas options. The, the really popular one in Colorado is the Toyota Tacoma as well. Uh, and I like these better than what I mentioned, the Ram 2500 heavy duty vehicles, because let's be real, right? For a lot of people who drive these trucks and don't need the really heavy duty capability, 
these are realistically just better options. They are honestly, you know, pretty cheap uh, for being a truck. They're smaller. They're more, actually more fuel efficient a little bit. Um, the Tacoma specifically isn't because it uses a very old Toyota engine, but it also makes them dead reliable. People love these. However, let's talk about the EV side of this because that's what I've been hyping up all video. So Rivian has made a big deal about this Colorado thing. They want people to talk about it on social media to pass the word about the uh, clean truck strategy for Colorado to basically get it moving again, get this legislation moving forward so that we can get further incentives for electric pickup trucks. I think that's all well and good, but I do want to kind of give some uh, reality check here because again, we're out of spec, we're neutral, we're not sponsored by any other automaker. I'm not trying to set you up an agenda here. I'm just trying to be very real and clear. Uh, the Rivian R1T is a fantastic pickup truck. It's not full size. The bed is actually not as big as like a F-150, but it's a great adventure truck. Um, really well engineered, great vehicle. They're catching up with production. Good for them. It is $87,000 base price, as you can see on their website, uh, currently. And that's before you even configure, you know, a few options, which you can, uh, like fancier wheels, etc., cetera, uh, or the upcoming very large battery pack. They're going to have the max pack. All of this stuff is expensive, especially the Rivians. And as much as I'm all in support of the Rivians getting tax incentives, I think the people buying Rivians are not necessarily the people buying um, Tacomas or even Ram 2500s. It's not to say the Rivian's not a capable truck. This thing can tow. I mean, Kyle uses it to tow Nissan Leafs and random things he picks up across the country all the time. However, let's be real. The problem with, I say this a lot, sorry. Let's be honest. I'll change it up. Uh, electric pickup trucks are just so, I don't know, problematic when it comes to towing loads because the aerodynamic um, drag of a trailer really destroys the range. You might have seen stories about this, but basically if you drive an R1T like Kyle does um, or an F-150 Lightning, very popular truck, uh, its range is decent, un unladen, or even with stuff in the bed. But once you're towing a big trailer, that just adds so much aerodynamic drag to your package that you're completely eating into your energy capacity uh, and you are just burning much more uh, electricity. I Burning is not a good term. You're consuming much more electricity, thereby getting like, you know, you would have gotten 240 to 300 miles of range. You'll be getting like 100 miles of range in some situations, maybe even less uh, just because of that huge drag. So battery technology has to improve. I get it. Electric pickup trucks aren't for everyone. However, the F-150 Lightning has been awesome, even though they've increased the price of even the base pro trim to a pretty crazy $60,000. This is quite expensive, a lot more expensive than some of the base F-150 gas versions you can get. Uh, so this video is kind of basically just I don't know. I want to hype you up for the clean truck strategy. I think this is an awesome move in Colorado specifically. And if it can be replicated nationwide or in other states, I am all in support of that. It's the kind of thing I like personally. But with electric pickup trucks, as they are currently being so expensive, I do think there are some interesting options, not just the Toyota Tacoma. Uh, in F-150 land, you actually have a really awesome F-150, which I think is the F-150 Power Boost. Uh, it's a plug-in hybrid, so it actually does the same cool pro power on board feature where it can function as an inverter and power other accessories and even charge other electric vehicles uh, with a level two because it gives you a 240 volt outlet from the truck bed. How cool is that? And it's legitimately pretty useful. And as a hybrid, it is decently efficient. Uh, so F-150 power boost is something to consider. I think one of the best hybrid trucks in the market. Ford even makes the Maverick hybrid, but that's kind of hard to get. They're super popular flying off the shelves. So in the moment, hybrid trucks are interesting, and I hope those are incentivized in some way too, because the reality of the situation is that the large battery packs necessary to make compelling high range, you know, EVs like the R1T or the F-150 Lightning are just pricey. So right now I think it would be useful to have some in between, but clean truck strategy, things like that I support and I think it'd be interesting to see more of them get done. So let me know what you guys thought of this video, of what I said, and if you think uh, there's other legislative solutions, other technological solutions, hydrogen, I don't know, what are you into for trucks? Let me know in the comments and let us know what other kind of out-of-spec guide videos you'd like to see in the future. I've been Max and I'll see you next time.